So as we get started today, this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point, just a look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna do the post stitch washcloth and this is using Red Heart Scrubby yarn but I'm going to be demonstrating two ways today. I'm going to be demonstrating it with Scrubby. Here this is Scrubby and Scrubby Sparkle and then I'm gonna be demonstrating with Lily Sugar and Cream so you can see exactly where the stitches go because it's kinda harder with this particular um, yarn and it works out pretty good and uh, we're gonna be getting involved today. You'll need a five millimeter size H crochet hook today and let's just talk about the ins and outs of this pattern. It's really quite simple. So you're going to notice that this is not a variegated yarn. There's actually three different colors, the red, white and blue and you can change the colors as often or as little as you wish. You can just use one color if you want to. It's up to you. When you are using multiple colors, you're just gonna carry it up on the side and when we do the border for this, it, which is not done on this sample yet because I'll do it with you on camera, is that you're gonna go over top of those um, dangling uh, pieces so that there's no cut yarn so it gets hidden underneath the border. So it's really a nice easy concept. You can go as big or as little as you want to. The outside border is just a matter of just circulating around. It does give a, a stitch count of like 14 um, uh, single crochets equally spaced across but again you can uh, do whatever size that you want to as long as you do your corners correctly. So let's uh, begin and we're gonna start off with our scrubby first and then we'll begin to do the lily sugar and cream second. So let's begin. Let's create a slip knot. Create a longer tail so that you can use a tapestry needle to hide in the tail ends later. So let's do that and you're going to chain a total of 17 to start. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17. Once you have all 17 done you're ready for row number 1. Now I know it's hard to see in the scrubby but you just have to trust in it. If you use Bernat Pip Squeak um, it's actually um, just like that you use your fingertips but you can probably see it a bit as well. So you're gonna go third chain from the hook so count it back. So one, two and three and turn it around and get the back hump of the chain and you're just going to double crochet into the back hump of each one of the chains going all the way across. So once you get the first back hump done the second one should just pop right out Again I have experience with this and I will demonstrate it with Lily Sugar and Cream as well. So th just in case you need more of a visual. So just double crochet yourself all the way back across and I'll see you back here in just a moment. When you get all the way across in row number one there should be 15 of these double crochets and the chain that you jumped over that you skipped when you went third chain from the hook also counts as one of those. So let's turn our work and do row number two. In row number two you're gonna chain one and then just in each stitch you can probably feel it but you may be able to see it and just at the top of each stitch just single crochet across. So nice and simple and just look at the post underneath and you know that the stitch is right above it and please do that all the way across. This is row number two. As I'm coming close to the end just don't forget that turning chain is also a stitch. So don't go into a space. Go right into the stitch work itself to finish it and that will conclude then row number two. So as we start rows number three and four we're gonna be doing a different color but don't finish anything off. Just let it go off to the side and we're gonna grab some new yarn to play with. The second yarn I'm using is Red Heart Scrubby Sparkle. So this is just regular scrubby. This is the sparkle version and you can actually see the core a lot more easier because it is a different piece. So we're gonna be doing that next and I'm just gonna grab a piece of that and let's begin to work that into this piece. So keep the yarn strands separate from each other as you start the next row. Slide on a slip knot of the new yarn coming on and you are going to chain three. So one and two and three and just make sure the yarns are not tangled with each other. Now you see that counts as a double crochet but in this pattern it does not. So in the very first stitch you are going to double crochet. Now the second post in two rows below. You can just feel the post but it's actually right there. I can see it is where we're gonna put a front post treble. So come on down and go to the second one over from the edge and you're going to put in a front post treble. And then that counts as the stitch that it's sitting in front of. So the next stitch when we uh, come back up is going to be a double crochet. 
and then the next one is a front post double uh, treble coming down. So it's every other stitch if that helps you to know that. So the next post is gonna not have it because you have a double here and so you'll do the next front post treble. Okay, so there's like almost like a space between them. So then we come back up here and we do the next double and then we jump back down. So we're gonna skip that post, go to the second over and do a front post treble. And you're gonna do that all the way uh, to the other side. And that's what it will look like. So it's just double and then a front post treble down. And please do this all the way to the end. So I'm coming all the way across. So the last, second last post will be the front post treble coming down. And then the last post will be then the double. Like that. So then you turn your work keeping the same color. So the colors will always change on the same side. So we have to come back. So the every other row is the same thing. So just chain up one and just single crochet. And you can see with this particular sparkle yarn you can see the stitches instead of just feeling for those. So just single crochet yourself all the way back. This is row number two and you have to change your color again um, as per the recommendation but again you can decide to do whatever you would like to do. So we will change the color back to green just to make sure that you, un you understand that point of view. So when you get all the way to the end remember that the first chain three never counted as anything so just pull things nice and tight. So it's just the last double crochet is where you're just gonna single crochet so don't put in a an extra single crochet. So finish that stitch completely. Drop this yarn and bring up the other color that you're playing with or add a new color. It does suggest three colors. So you're just gonna pull through. So that's one chain of three and two and three and then you're going to restart with what you already know. So then coming back down into the same stitch you're going to double crochet and essentially we're matching exactly what we see. So the next one is a front post treble here. So we're gonna make this one a front post treble around that same one. And so the next one has to be a double. And then the next one com is coming back down. So you're just matching exactly what you see. That's as hard as this thing gets really. And then the next one has to be a double. So please do this all the way across. I'll see you at the end of this row in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way to the other side just matching what's already there below. And then the last stitch is a double crochet. And then you're gonna turn your work and go back. So to go back is always the same. Pretty much chain up one and then single crochet yourself all the way back. You can use your fingertips and I can actually see the stitches in person but it's harder on camera because you're not in front of it directly. So please uh, go back all the way and single crochet and then we're gonna talk about the repeating and then move on in this tutorial today. So here are the samples side by side. So this is as per the instructions. So you can see that the second color can be visible three times and then the main color that I started with is four times. Remember that the pattern does show that there's three colors so that you can still follow the pattern and get that. Now when I teach you the outside border of this I'm just gonna just improvise a little bit. You can keep it to the stitch counts if you want to but what you just need to do is keep cycling through until you get to the size that you would like to go. So just refer to the pattern for that information if you're looking for it or just kind of look at this example and say that's what I'm gonna do. So what I'm gonna do now is move on to the Lily Sugar and Cream version just to demonstrate this once again using yarn that you can actually see the stitches with. So let's restart again and I'm using Lily Sugar and Cream yarn today uh, for this particular portion of the video so you can see the stitches. So I wanna chain a total of 17. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 16, and 17. Once you have your 17 there, we're gonna start row number one. So let's start row number one. It says to go double crochet third chain from the hook. I believe it's the fourth chain but if you'd like to do the third it's up to you. So one, two, three, go to the fourth chain and then start your double crochet at that moment. 
and I want you just in the back hump just working your way all the way across and you should have a total of 15 double crochets that are done and that includes that chain that you just jumped over. So there's technically four right now. So please double crochet yourself all the way across your chain. So I ended up in the end. So four chain from the hook is the right answer and then what we're going to do is turn our work and go to row number two. In row number two you're just gonna chain one and you'll put one single crochet in each stitch going all the way across. So please do that all the way and I'll see you at the end of the row in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way to the end. Don't forget this turning chain here. That's also a stitch to so go right into the chain at the work itself. Don't go into the main space and finish that and then lay this back down and we're going to introduce the secondary color as we move on to row number three. Keeping a long tail just create another slip knot with your new yarn. Put this to the back. Don't fasten that off. Just keep it there and just put this on. And you're gonna chain three so that it's one, two and three. This will not count as a double crochet as we talked about before. So keeping the tails in behind and in the top of the first one that we're coming out of we're going to double crochet. So that first chain three is just a builder. Now starting in the second post two rows below you're gonna do a front post treble down and that counts as the stitch that it's sitting in front of and so the next stitch is a double crochet. So every other stitch is going to be jumping down like this. So this one here that's part of this one so we have to jump here the next time we jump. So it's a front post treble and then the next one has to be a double. This stitch combination is called the alpine stitch but it's the next uh, time that we do this which eliminates it from being the alpine stitch. So but it's the same concept. Okay so coming down. So come down every other one and put a double crochet in between and then we'll be at the end of the row in just a moment. So if your math is right the second one before the end it's the last one that comes down to and that's keeping it in sync and then the last stitch here is a double crochet. So the stitch uh, stitches will continue to be consistent and the color changing will always be on this side of the work. So we have to turn our work and then move to number four to come back. In row number four you're gonna chain up one and put in one single crochet into each. So every other row is the same thing in the return pass of just single crochet coming back. And then what we're going to do is that I'm going to release this yarn, not fasten off but just put it to the side and we're going to then bring back the blue. In the example there's actually three colors so you can decide to do three colors if you wish but I'll just show it. I'll just keep it consistent. I'm just showing you two for now. When you come back all the way to the end don't forget that there is a chain three that does not count as a stitch and the first double crochet so you're only coming into the double crochet and finishing it and then laying it back down and we're going to change the color back to blue. So put this yarn in front of you and grab that blue that was just dangling off to the side and just kind of pull up on it and so it comes up from behind and you're gonna start the next row. If this strand is, come, is on the front side it doesn't really matter as long as it comes up and just make sure that you don't leave any like really loose strands there. So you're gonna chain three so one, two, three. That doesn't count as anything and you'll double crochet in the first one. So you did that before right? And now instead of coming down into uh, just a regular double crochet we're only gonna be playing when we come down into these front post trebles. And this is what changes from not being the alpine stitch. So coming down is a front post treble around the existing front post treble and then that counts as the stitch that it's sitting in front of and so you'll double crochet in the next. So the posts are gonna match each other so this is gonna look like ribbing on the front side. And you'll go all the way across in the same format and then meet me on the other side in just a moment. Okay. 
So coming up to the other side you're just matching your stitches that you can see. And it's easier to see the, the sparkle yarn too when it's um, in this particular format. Like going around the post instead of individual stitches. So then you'll just double crochet in your last one and there you go. So you have to return. So turn your work and then just chain one and one single crochet going back. So this is the repeat then for the entire pattern and we'll talk about what to do next. So of course we have our scrubby sample here. We have the Lily Sugar and Cream. So you can see that the secondary color is shown three times. So that this green is shown once and then it will show again and then again when you're transitioning that. So every two rows you change the color. So eventually you'll end up on the top. If you don't happen to have the same amount of stitches or you wanna make it longer or bigger you can do so because I'm just going to improvise on the border just to show you how that can be done. Now the trick is, is as, as I mentioned in the scrubby version is that you'll have these t uh, sides that are carrying up. So when we do the border we're gonna be putting those underneath as we go around so we can trap those into position. So what I want to do is just uh, show you how to finish off. So when you, so once you get all the way to the top you don't wanna fasten off and so you just wanna keep that on. But what I would highly recommend before you do anything else is that any loose ends that you do have because you would have had to finish your yellow or your secondary color. So we want to put those into a tapestry needle so that we can hide that in next. So let me show you that. So any loose ends that you'll end up having just throw it through a tapestry needle. You'll wanna do that so that you can um, hide these in. You will be scrubbing of course or somebody will be. And so you can pull a loop on there to let that go. Okay and then all you're just going to do is drag this through the same color. And the trick is is to drag it through a total of three times. So when you pull on it don't change the shape of your project by over tightening and you wanna go back and forth inside the stitch work in slightly different paths a total of three times. So all loose ends that you have you will need to do that including the starting strand. And so please do that and then I'll be back in just a moment. So all my tails are in. We still have the carrying strands that are up on the side which we're gonna bury in on the first revolution. There's a total of three rounds. Once you get your first round done the rest of the other two just follow suit. They have a color change opportunity if you wish and that's something that you can keep in mind. So as you begin you want to just chain up one and you want to go into the very first stitch, single crochet, chain two which will help you turn the corner and single crochet in to the same stitch. So now your corner is established. So just going across and you're just going to single crochet and it states that there's 14 single crochets in between the corners. Again you can improvise. Honestly it just is uh, something that you can eye up on your own. And so we wanna get ourselves to the other corner which is the top piece. So in the very last stitch you're going to single crochet in, chain two to turn the corner and then coming back into the same stitch. Now down the side we wanna equally space in the chain work itself and in this case there is no carrying strands but there is on this side which I will demonstrate when I get over there. So you're just going to equally space out your single crochets going down the sides. Now focus on the actual chain work itself. Don't focus on pulling out a chain so it's uh, separating. So when you go in, going in don't go into a space, go right into a chain. And equally space out your single crochets as you're working your way down. And then I'll see you at the next corner in just a moment. So coming in the corner is next and so it's the very top of the, the bottom uh, starting chain. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet and this is the starting chain so just work your way equally, equally across. You should be able to feel for the stitches if not you can see them. And you're just gonna single crochet across until you hit the next corner. So on the next side that we're about to hit then we will be covering over top of those uh, strands that were being dragged up on the sides. So I'm already at the next corner. So I, chain, I single crochet, chain two, single crochet into the same. Now I'm gonna work myself up this side again equally spacing into some chain work or, or the side of the posts. And so anything that's being dragged up like this I just wanna make sure that I go over top of it so that it gets stuck up underneath the stitch work. 
So you'll see that color there and then this yellow is being dragged and just make sure that you, you just crochet right over top of it and that will get it stuck underneath. So it's a great way to change colors without having to change your um, yarn strands and like cutting strands and we having to weave in ends. So just coming all the way back to the other side just take your time. I feel like I'm rushing because I am. And then eventually you end up back at the start of this round. Now you already started with the corner the way that I demonstrated it. So you're just gonna slip stitch it to the very first single crochet that you started with and that will conclude that round. So we're gonna do two more rounds and then we'll be back in just a moment. To start a next round just slip stitch to the next chain two space and start there. So just a chain one single crochet, chain two and single crochet into that space and now you can just single crochet across uh, all the way at the, on the top. You should be able to see if not feel the stitches and you're gonna go all the way around. So on the corners it'll be single crochet, chain two, single crochet and then just keep on moving on. So you've already established the stitch work on the first round so now it's just a matter of following suit. And I'll see you at the end of this round and we'll just recap one more time. So I came all the way back around. I slip stitched to the first single crochet and I'm starting my third and final round. So a slip stitch to the chain two which I've already done, chain one and then start into the corner. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So that's a single crochet. And then you're just gonna follow around once again just matching the single crochets together and then on the chain two space corners place in single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Do this all the way around for this final round and if you want it bigger you can keep on going but if not we're gonna be finishing off in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way back around and I'm slip stitching to the first single crochet and then that's it. The story is ending. So we just have to just fasten this off. Make sure that you do do a longer tail so that you can put this through a tapestry needle and I've already shown you how to weave the ends in and out a total of three times. So turn it to the back side back side you can see it just looks like regular stripes and you were just going to feed this through the tapestry needle and weave it in and out a total of three times. So this here is the post stitch crochet washcloth by Yarn Inspirations and this is using Red Heart Scrubby and in the tutorial today I demonstrated using Red Heart Spar uh, Scrubby Sparkle which is in the yellow too so it gives it a little bit of shine. <laughs> Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.